Hi, I'm Sophia of Sophia Luna Designs. I'm a printmaker based in York, England. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I have a website, sophialunadesigns.com, and also an Etsy shop, Sophia Luna Designs. Um, I thought I would take you through making one of my prints today. This is the design so far. I've just sketched it out on Lino. Um, I'm about to wash it with an acrylic paint and then we're going to start carving. That will probably take a few days given that I have an 11 month old. He's just about to turn one actually. Uh, so I'll probably only get, you know, a half hour a day, <laughs> maybe a few hours. Uh, yeah, so it'll probably take a few days. So don't, you know, be alarmed if I change clothes. And if I sweat a lot, it's because it's 32 degrees in England and I'm not used to that kind of heat. So let's get going. Step one, inking up the block. I generally use this. Can you see? No. There we go. It's Windsor and Newton ink. It comes in loads of colours. I use purple just because I like it. <laughs> and we do this because when you carve away at the lino, the colour of the underneath of it is pretty much the same as the colour of the top of it. So it makes it really difficult to tell what you have and haven't carved away until it comes to printing it and inking up the block. So you put a layer of ink on and then it's really obvious. I use a little pipette to squeeze it onto the block and then one of these cool little sponge things to spread it out. You can use a brush or your fingers, anything really. So let's have a go at that. The trick here is not less is more, but only use a bit. <laughs> you can always make it thicker, but if you put on too much, it makes it quite hard. So just do a few drops and then spread it out. Put a little bit of water on whatever you're using to spread it and spread it out just so you get a very thin layer. The thicker the layer, the harder it is to see the design Oops, underneath. So you really, I'm doing this one handed so I'm making a pretty bad job of it. <laughs> but um, yeah the thicker the layer the harder it is to see the design underneath but you want it to be thick enough that it obviously makes a difference to the colour. The thing that I like to do is I'll just do one layer and um, let it dry which doesn't take that long and then you can see how dark it really is and then if you need to you can always do another layer. Here we are it's nice and dry I am going to add another layer just because it's quite faint, um, which can be good, but I think I just need a, a slightly darker covering, I think. Watch me regret this. One more layer did it and it's perfect. It is uh, translucent enough that I can see the design quickly and it is opaque enough that it will make an obvious difference when I carve the design away. So two layers was bang on. Like I said, always go in lighter because if you do it too thick, there's no going back, but you can always top it up to build it up if you want to. Let's get carving. We're about to start carving. I've had to put my hair up because it's absolutely roasting. I'm not happy about it <laughs> because I don't love my face. <laughs> um, but you know, hey ho, we're cracking on. These are my weapon of choice. These are the FlexCut Micro, yeah, they're the Micro Palm tool set. Um, I think they're incredible. They're not dissimilar. I wrote a blog post a while ago on my website. Um, and it was basically about how I made it work with about four tools. And I know there's like loads and loads and loads of different options out there, but just those four were perfectly fine for me. And they've worked for everything that I've needed them to for this entire time. And then I bought these and they're not dissimilar in the finish that they provide. Admittedly, there's not a large one for clearing large areas, but um, yeah, they, it's not like they give me a different cut 
than the ones I already had. But they're so much nicer to hold in the hand. That's the thing that I find about the ones that I already had, the file tools. Um, because you put a lot of pressure on the top, so not only do you end up with dents in the bottom of your finger, but you end up with like a kind of cramp because you've been applying pressure. Whereas these, they sit so nicely in your hand, it's flat on top, so you're just pushing down like this. So there's no um, pain on your finger. And they fit so comfortably in your palm, so you're kind of like applying pressure using your hand rather than your finger, which is just a lot more comfortable and means that you can do it for a lot longer time. Unless you like being in pain. <laughs> in which case you could use the other ones. Also, they are quite expensive. I think they're about £100. But they do come with a tool sharpener, which is honestly game-changing. The whole thing is game-changing, I think. Um, but this is fantastic because it means that you can just sharpen them up on the go. I wasn't a person that sharpened their tools regularly just because I didn't prioritise it. I don't have that much time um, and I would just push through with the state that they were in. I did have, I used to sharpen them on a bit of scrap belt from my husband's old leather belt. But um, now that I've got this, it is incredible because they fit perfectly on like the things so you can sharpen them on the go really quick i think it's great but yeah those are my weapon of choice for today and we'll be carving with them that wasn't an ad by the way i'm not privileged enough <laughs> or successful enough to be advertising things <laughs> those are just genuinely that's my advice as a printmaker this is what i would invest in if you are looking for tools to start with these are the ones that I would get. And if you're looking for tools and you're an accomplished printmaker, these are what I would get. You'll see them in people's Instagram posts all the time because they look really pretty as well. Right, I have switched to recording in my phone now, so there'll probably be a disparity in quality of video or sound. I'm not sure which. Maybe there won't be, and then I'll be disappointed because my camera was really expensive. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so I've switched to my phone. This is what the block looks like at the moment. And um, by the way, before you before you start doing anything with a block, you should always give it a light sand because um, that means that when it comes to printing, it'll be really easy to apply the ink. Whereas if you haven't sanded it down, then uh, there can be slight, you know, waviness to the lino or like little bits on it. Um, and then the ink just doesn't apply as evenly or as easily. So always give it a light sand. I always use like 400 grit sandpaper, maybe higher. Uh, right, let's get carving. Where I like to start is with the bits that you are most likely to mess up. I'm gonna start with the eyes because if you spend all day doing the easy bits and then you do the hard bits last, chances are, I mean, if you mess it up, um, you'll have wasted all that time. So if you're going to mess it up, mess it up early. That's what I always say. Let's get started carving some eyes.
shopping is pretty much complete now. So this is what we've got. Um, I've pretty much finished carving all of the lemurs. But obviously we haven't done a test print yet, so there might be further work to be done. <laughs> Uh, but the last thing that I want to do is put like a kind of background in. It's not something that I do every time, but I thought it'd be quite cool to try and show you that. So we're going to have a go at putting like a little... Um, the idea is that it's, it results in a kind of embossed background. So you do a carving, um, but then you don't put ink on the background. So it gives a kind of embossed effect. So... We're going to draw that out and then we're going to carve it. We're finally ready to do a test print. There are quite a few um, different steps to this, so I'm going to take you through them and try and remember them as I go along. So the first thing is your ink. Now I always use this, it's Cranfield uh, Caligo Safe Wash Relief Inks. And the reason I always use a safe wash is because um, most inks are oil based. I have a lot of oil based inks and to clean them up, you have to use um, oil, which is messy and hard and tough to get out. It takes a long time, whereas these just wash up with water and soap. So it's super, super easy. And it means it just cuts down the amount of equipment you need. So that's the ink that I use. You need a roller. You need a palette knife if you're mixing. I'm not mixing. Actually, I'm going to use... Sorry, I keep going in and out of focus. <laughs> I'm going to use this little roller because there's only a small... Usually I use a big one for... The rule of thumb is usually use a roller bigger from the surface area that you're covering, then you won't end up with streaks all over it. But because I just want to ink up the lemurs and to knock the background, I'm going to use this little guy. Uh, so yes, yeah, this is the test print and we'll see how it goes along the way. I'm sure there'll be things that I want to change. I've already got some ideas. <laughs> things I think might bother me is that I've left like some bits here and I think I might have to carve them away look here yeah anyway I'm gonna wipe away these just with um my cloth and then just with a wet cloth literally oh, just water on a cloth because uh, I don't want any ink on the leaves and then I'll show you again. Right, I've done, and I've literally just wiped it off with water and then wiped it off with the cloth. I'm definitely gonna have to cut and do something here because this is too, um, gosh, it will not focus. It's too much black, you can't see his face. Um, my husband's just come up with an excellent idea though of making a template and then, so I've never done this before where I just inked up the foreground and not the background. So my husband's just suggested I'll make a template to lay over it when I'm inking up. So we'll try that again next time. Uh, but for this first test sprint, we're just going to roll it now and see how it turns out. I'm now setting up my um, press. And what I want, I've made my own, I forget what you're called, but basically these go along the sides so that you know everything's at the le at the right level. So I've cut them to the side of the depth of the lino that I use and what you want is for this to be just touching these so otherwise it's going to do it too 
harsh, too hard the print, so I roll the leaves to drop that down. And as soon as I feel it touch it, which is there, I will leave it. Do that other one. That's that. And now just roughly check, it's wonky the floor, so that is at seven and a half, and that is at just over seven and a half, so that's probably about right and then the paper that i'm using is just like one pound the cheapest print making paper that you can get i do sometimes just use normal printing paper as in paper from the printer but i've got some spare print making paper so i might as well give it a go i'll set it up and then i'll show you Right, and then I'm just going to turn my so it goes. Now that was like it's not done anything, but it has. Okay, cool. So that's them, but obviously we can't see the imprint, so I actually need it to be harder. So I've done a few more prints. This is still the first one. The first one shows that the pressure I had set up right at the beginning is perfect for the actual lemurs. The problem is that you don't really start getting um, to see the background. If you can see, it's a little bit embossed on that one but like this is using the printmaking paper and this is what i really want you don't really start getting that you can see it more in real life you can't see it as much on camera ish um but that only really starts to happen when you have a lot of pressure and obviously that's too much for this because then it just starts slipping so i think i'm gonna have to do the print separately like print it without ink and then print it again i think as in print it with just the background and then print it with lemurs we shall see hi i'm back and i've done some research <laughs> which you should always do because it saves you the time that I have wasted. <laughs> um, so a few things. I've made a uh, stencil, like I said I was going to try. I've yet to try it, I'm going to try it with you now. Um, but it seems like a better idea than me just rolling the ink on and hoping for the best. I have seen a couple of people do it since and they're using a lot thicker, they're kind of using a almost a plastic material I think whereas I'm just going to use tracing paper because I don't have any plastic <laughs> fundamentally I don't have any so I'm just going to try it with the tracing paper and see what happens um, and then in terms of I wasn't getting that embossed um, effect that I was going for so I did some research into that and apparently what you're supposed to do is dampen the paper there are a couple of methods to do that I did a printmaking course a while ago and the method that they used was to soak the paper. Um, I don't really have the time to do that because I would either leave it too long and it disintegrate or not long enough and it wouldn't be damp enough. And I don't have a rolling pin to roll it after it anyway. So what I'm going to do instead is I have a little spray bottle um, and I bought this for watering my plants so it's been very useful for a lot of things i literally just used it a minute ago to clean the gutters outside my house uh so i'm going to use it now to wet the paper and i'll take you along with me and we'll see what happens let me show you the stencil so the benefit of the tracing paper is obviously that you can oh i can't twist you around 
uh, see the design. So it's easy to just trace it through and then cut it out. Um, so we're going to try inking that up and then just see what the situation is. Right, I'm going to hold each section in place while I do that monkey, that lima. I think that's worked pretty well. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay. What do you see? I think I love it. So I think I need to cut the uh, thing bigger, the template bigger. But other than that, I love it. I love it. Look at that. The embossing, I mean, that was the main thing I wanted to accomplish today because it was just such a fail yesterday. I've obviously got to work on my template for the lemurs, as in my stencil, because they're, I don't know, I'm just not happy with them. Um, but I'll work on that a few times and then I think we'll be good. Incredibly, I have finally finished. <laughs> it's taken a long time, but we're finally there. I've got two results, one with the clear embossed background and one with a black background because in the end, I just, on this particular piece, I didn't like the embossed background. I'll show you why in a second. Um, but I've got two types of finished prints and I'll show you them now. So this is the embossed background. Um. The stencil worked really well, I re this is my favourite guy, <laughs> um, and the embossing I really really like, um, but I think because these guys aren't touching I just don't particularly like it in this instance, I think all of your foreground should be touching if you're going to do a embossed, clear embossed background. Um, so in the end I actually went for just covering the whole thing in black because I think it looks better um, and I really really like it now I kind of like there are some that are a little bit more faded than this and I really like the effect of that um, but I think it's really cool I hope you do too Thanks for sticking with me on this one. I know it's been a really long process and I know what I originally set out to do is not what the end result has been. But the thing is, that's what happens with art and you got to be prepared to pivot, <laughs> as they say. So thank you very much for watching today's video. Please get a, a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And this guy will be up for sale on my website, an Etsy shop. So please do check that out. Thanks for watching.